Let's start at the beginning. Desperate parents send their child away from a dying world. Raised by humble American farmers, the boy grows up to be a symbol of truth and justice. A mugger shoots and kills two wealthy industrialists in a dark alley in front of their son. He dedicates his life to stopping the criminals who prey on the innocent. A bullied teen gets bitten by a radioactive spider and learns the hard way that with great power comes great responsibility. Why are we so fascinated with origin stories? Welcome to Comic Misconceptions, a show that takes you into detail about the things you think you know about comics. I'm your host, Scott Nicewonder. That was the very first episode of the show you're watching right now. This is the very first logo I made for the channel, Atrocious, and this is a screenshot of the very first time I ever wrote the word NerdSync. These are all little fragments from the origin of this channel, and as next week will be our 100th episode, I thought it would be kind of interesting to take a quick look at how this all started. But why? Why do origins even matter? Comic books are littered with origin stories. They're constantly telling and retelling origins, tweaking little details, showing it from another perspective, rebooting it all together, or simply refreshing the reader's mind. The origin of a superhero is important, to say the least, but what is an origin story? Clinical psychologist Dr. Robin S. Rosenberg, who literally wrote the book on superhero origins, says, quote, origin stories are often tales about transformation, stories in which a pivotal event or set of events sets us on a particular path in life. They explain who someone is and what makes them the way they are. And a superhero origin features two types of transformation. There's the super part, which centers around how a character receives, discovers, or develops special powers or abilities, and the hero part, which, as you can probably guess, focuses on the transformation of the character into a hero, where they decide how to use their new powers and abilities. And for the sake of this video, we're going to address all comic book heroes as superheroes. Even though you might personally argue that someone like Batman, for example, isn't a superhero, but just a hero. We'll discuss this topic in a future video, I promise, just hang in there. Another distinguishing feature of an origin story is that it's followed by subsequent stories. Take Jurassic Park. You could argue that the first movie in the franchise is the origin story. It shows how the dinosaurs were grown and the beginning of the proposed theme park. It showcases the transformation from an exotic island resort and amusement park to a terrifying landscape of certain death and a very scary place to use a bathroom. But if there were never any sequels, then we might not consider it to be an origin story. It would simply be a story. The existence of accounts that take place after the first movie, in effect, turn it into an origin story. Okay, that sounds simple enough, but a great comic book origin is deceptively complex. In reality, it has to cover a lot of ground in a very short amount of time. Comic book writer and editor Tom DeFalco laid out a blueprint for crafting the perfect superhero origin stories. First, and most obviously, we need to be introduced to the protagonist, but it can't just be anybody. The main character has to already be interesting before they become a hero. Whether that's Barry Allen being a forensic scientist obsessed with solving his mom's murder and proving his father's innocence, or Scott Lang being an ex-convict who would do anything for his daughter. These are people you can get invested in immediately. Then, something happens. There's some kind of accident or inciting event that changes the character. A radioactive spider bite, the death of a loved one, getting bitten by a snake and then injected with mongoose blood until you have super speed. Then the death of a loved one. And it doesn't even have to give them powers or abilities right then and there. It can simply inspire them to become a hero through their own means. Bruce Wayne didn't become Batman and start beating up thugs as soon as the trigger was pulled. Instead, he used that moment as motivation to train and learn and become the Dark Knight years down the line. But remember, that's just the super part of superhero. A good origin also needs to explain the hero part. Spider-Man used his powers initially as a means to make money, but when Uncle Ben died, Peter did not hesitate before using his special skill set to catch the murderer. Imagine though, if that was the end of the story. Pete caught his uncle's killer. Good job. Now what? There's no reason for him to continue fighting crime. Why not just go back to making money on TV? Ah, because of that famous twist. That criminal wasn't just some random guy. It was the same thief Spider-Man intentionally failed to stop earlier that day. Because of this revelation, 
Spidey learned a lesson to use his powers responsibly. An origin needs to clearly spell out why someone would choose to be and remain a hero. The origin should also establish the rules of a character. Green Lantern has to keep his power ring charged. Deadpool can heal from almost anything. And Wolverine must refer to everyone as Bub. Has to, no way around it. We need to understand how the hero's powers work and their limits. Are their abilities strictly advantageous or are there downsides? It doesn't have to be entirely laid out like the excruciatingly detailed Bloodshot comic, but just throw in some hints to the reader as to establish some ground rules. Lastly, the origin needs to set up a theme and structure of the kinds of stories that you'll be telling with that character. Batman often fights ruthless, criminally insane adversaries. Doctor Strange revolves around the mystical and magical. The X-Men regularly struggle against oppression in the eyes of the public. It's fun to see Batman fight aliens occasionally when he's with the Justice League, but it'd feel really weird if that's how his stories were all the time. It's not the theme of his origin. Batman's origin is about the loss of his parents at the hands of an average street thug. It's about the trauma he suffered as a child and how he found meaning in it. And trauma, as Rosenberg points out, is one of three kinds of superhero origins. She explains that all superheroes are made in some way. They can be born super, i.e. with powers, but they're never born superheroes. This leads back into the idea that an origin story is a kind of transformation that the character undergoes, and the events that lead into these transformations can fit into one of three general categories. The first one, as we mentioned, is trauma. This one is super common in comic books, where the number of protagonists with one or more dead parents rivals that of Disney. Batman seeing his parents gunned down in front of him, Daredevil losing his sight and his father, Wolverine enduring unimaginable amounts of pain to become a living weapon. These are characters who suffer through physical and psychological pain, which serves as the catalyst for their transformation. The second type of origin is about destiny. These are your quote unquote chosen ones, though I do feel like a clarification should be made here. Being chosen for something isn't the same as being a chosen one. Steve Rogers, for example, was chosen for the super soldier program, but he wasn't destined from birth to become Captain America. At least that wasn't explicitly stated that way in the comics. You do whatever you want with your own headcanon. A more accurate representation of the destiny origin might be Hawkman and Hawkgirl on Legends of Tomorrow. They keep dying at the hand of Vandal Savage only to be reborn perpetually. In each of their new lives, they are preordained from birth to once again become Hawkeyan. Bird people. As much as Kendra wants to, she can't fight it. She can only embrace her destiny as Hawk Girl. The third and last category of origins is chance or luck, like the Fantastic Four accidentally flying a spacecraft through a storm of cosmic rays, or Barry Allen being randomly struck by lightning and doused in a chemical bath to gain his super speed, in the initial telling of his origin. At least we all know Flash's true origin was at the hands of a magical imp. If you're new here, you're not really gonna get that one. I understand that some of these might be hard to distinguish. Chance can sometimes feel like destiny, and sometimes traumatic events seem preordained, especially as we view origin stories of one character across many alternate universes. The distinction is subtle, sure, and we could have a really long, insightful conversation about it in the comments, but the important thing here is that these types of origins aren't mutually exclusive. Superman's origin is traumatic, how he's one of the last surviving members of his species, but it's also pure chance that he would end up being raised by two small town farmers. Spider-Man's origin is also a blending of chance with the radioactive spider bite and trauma with Uncle Ben dying. You could also argue that it was destiny with the whole spider totem thing, but you shouldn't. You should just ignore that. But none of this explains why we care, why we invest so much into a character's origin story. Rosenberg explains that it's because origins satisfy our curiosity and make a character more predictable. Humans love predictability. Our brains are pattern recognition machines. So learning why a character acts a certain way, how they came to be where they are now, why they have a particular belief system, it all helps fill in the gaps that we've previously had to fill in ourselves using our best guesses. Origin stories help us make sense of other people and see them as a little more predictable. It's no surprise that many comic book movies dedicate a large chunk of the film on the origin of the hero, to the point where some viewers have complained about origin story fatigue. Thanks to some very helpful NerdSync fans on Twitter, you guys are the best, we gathered some very rough data on this in a non-scientific way, measuring how long until a protagonist in a comic book movie becomes the hero. In other words, at what point of the movie did the origin story stop? 
What we found was that the average percentage that superhero movies spend on origins is around 33%, or almost exactly one third of the movie. Most superhero movies tend to tell a linear tale, starting with a character and following them on their journey to become a hero, which is fine, but it doesn't really reflect reality. When you meet someone new, you don't often start by telling each other your life stories from the very beginning. You get to know them as the person they are right now. And as you interact more and more, they reveal details of their past in a very non-linear fashion that you can compile into a sort of mental storyboard of that person's life to get a, uh, get a better sense of who they are. I didn't know you worked at Taco Bell. Was that before or after you helped save the world from total destruction? Watchmen demonstrates this very well. The story starts off with the characters in present day, but keeps jumping about in time to give you a better sense of who everyone is. There's also Batman, who I'm mentioning a lot in this video. He debuted in Detective Comics number 27, but his origin wasn't told to the reader until many months later in issue number 33. To that extreme, you have Wolverine's origin, which wasn't fully revealed until years after his first appearance. It wasn't only kept from us, the readers, but also from Wolverine himself due to his missing memories, leaving both parties to try and fill in the blanks of his past. While learning the official origin of a character can be more satisfying than guessing, it also runs the risk of being disappointing. Sometimes what our brains cook up to fill in the gaps can be more interesting than the real official origin. And other times we just don't want to know what a character's origin is. They can be humanizing and that's great, but it can also ruin a character. Joker, for instance, has had many different origins, but none of them are the definitive origin. It's constantly in flux as to not give the audience any sense of understanding or predictability. As he himself said, quote, if I'm gonna have a past, I prefer it to be multiple choice. But Rosenberg argues that the biggest reason why we care so much about superhero origins is because they, quote, provide a model for how to cope with adversity, how to find meaning in loss and trauma, how to learn what our strengths are and to use them for good purpose, and how to live a fulfilled life, though one filled with risk. Origin stories don't teach us how to be super. A large blast of gamma rays is more likely to kill me than it is to turn me into the Hulk. I unfortunately was not born Kryptonian, and I highly doubt I'll ever be able to make or even afford an Iron Man suit. Origin stories are less about powers and more about the decision to do good with them. This is especially true for the heroes born out of traumatic experiences. They show us how to make sense of seemingly senseless violence and loss and grow from it. Dr. Irvin Staub coined the term altruism born of suffering to describe how some victims of abuse and violence dedicate their lives to helping others who are also suffering. One contributing factor to this altruism is if the victim is helped or comforted during their own suffering by a kind friend or neighbor. Even a man doing something as simple and reassuring as putting a coat around a young boy's shoulders to let him know the world hadn't ended. And I think that's the difference between the origin of a hero versus the origin of a villain. Both can have one bad day where everything changes, but have radically different reactions. A villain might become cynical and greedy. They develop the mentality of doing whatever they want with little to no consideration of others because the universe didn't cut them any slack. But a hero uses adversity as a means of personal growth. They find meaning in it by helping others. And in that way, superhero origins inspire us to grow as well when we're faced with adversity. As Rosenberg writes, superhero origin stories are our stories. What do you guys think? Why do we care so much about origin stories? Is there a particular hero or villain whose origin resonates with you? Let's talk about it all in the comments. If you are as fascinated with superhero origins as I am, click right here to binge watch a playlist of videos that dive into the real world origins behind Venom, Fantastic Four, Kryptonite, and more. There's some amazing history and trivia to discover in these videos, so click right here or the link in the description to check them out. Or perhaps now that we've exhausted origins, you'd like to discuss the concept of secret identities. We've got you covered. Click right here to see our video defending the seemingly diminishing use of secret identities in comic books and especially comic book movies. And make sure you hit that big sexy subscribe button so you don't miss out on all the new videos we make for you every week that explore the history, science, art, and philosophy behind your favorite comic book superheroes. My name is Scott reminding you to read between the panels. See ya.